E. How do you calculate the slope at point C? The slope at point C which can be approximately given by the slope of the blue line BC. But the slope of the blue line BC is that angle right there which is given by the formula which you learned from high school tangent of that angle is equal to like rise which is the distance CD divide by run distance DB so the question is how do you calculate the distance CD which we call rise that should be equal to CF but CF is exactly the function evaluated at XI so F of XI the function at XI according to the picture it is exactly equal to the vertical distance CF that is CF and if you take that distance CF you subtract with the function evaluate at XI plus 1 if you look at the picture the function evaluate at XI plus 1 is exactly equal to the distance BE that guy is BE so if you take CF subtract CF subtract BE you will get CD CD that CD represent as a rise according to my notation divide by run this distance right here we call run which is the distance BD okay distance BD okay and that BD actually is the same thing as XI minus XI plus 1 as you can see from the picture the distance BD we call run is the same thing as XI subtract XI plus 1 so basically what I said so far is this all I said so far to make to summarize it I can summarize like this so far what I said up to now is we say in order to find out the slope at point C we supposed to use to figure out the slope of the green line EC on the curve uh, on the picture but instead of using the green line EC the tangent line to find out the slope at point C we approximate it to find out the slope by using the secant line of BC and that immediately gave us the first formula on that slide now in the next iteration we say we wish that the next estimation xi plus 1 will be the root as you can see on the slide in the first iteration we guess the root is xi and then in the next iteration the estimation for the root is xi plus 1 it is not exactly equal to the root at a yet okay but we wish in the next iteration xi plus 1 will be the root and if xi plus 1 is the root by definition it means the function evaluated at xi plus 1 should be equal to 0 if xi plus 1 turn out to be the exact root and that's what we wish so you go back to the first equation that we already developed and we say in the next iteration we wish the function f evaluate at xi plus 1 we wish that function f evaluate at xi plus 1 to be equal to 0 that's what we wish well in that case then the formula become the slope at point C 
is approximately equal to function at xi, that is here, subtract function at xi plus 1, we wish to be equal to 0, that's there, and then divide by the usual xi minus xi plus 1. So, that is what we have. But then, finally, we know one thing. The slope at point C mathematically means the derivative of the function at the location xi. So, we just replace the slope at point C by f prime of x. And then on the right hand side, we have the same thing equal to f xi divided by xi subtract xi plus 1. And then from this equation, we can easily solve for xi plus 1. We can solve for xi plus 1. And that formula is given in here. That is a formula to figure out xi plus 1. In terms of xi, f, and f prime. So that is exactly, here is a newton Raphson equation that I have just derived for you. So, to summarize it, it is very simple. Assuming you know the function capital F, to find out the root of that nonlinear equation using the newton raphson all you have to do is, first, you guess xi equal to, let's say, x0. Once you know x0, you can figure out the function F and the first derivative f prime, evaluate at x sub i. So from that, you can calculate the right hand side, that will figure out xi plus 1 for you. And then you keep repeatedly using that formula until it converges. And that is essentially the so-called newton raphson method. Now, you remember from my previous slide, if you remember, I say in self say small f prime, the first derivative with respect to x equal to 0. At that time, I say, well, let me replace small f prime by the so-called capital F. So actually, the capital function F, which is a function of x, is the same thing as the small f prime. So if you look in the newton raphson equation here, and you replace the function capital F equal to the same thing as small f prime. And therefore, the capital F prime will be the same thing as a small f with the second derivative. So, that equation that I just wrote for you right here on the screen, that is exactly the same equation that I supposed to prove to you, like you see, on the previous slide, which is this formula, and I just derived for you already. Okay, so that is the Newton Raphson, the formula that you see on the screen right there. And as you can see on the next screen, I already explained to you where that formula coming from. How do I obtain those formula? So I have already defined, explained everything that you need to know about the theory behind Newton method to find out the minimum or the maximum of a given function with one variable. Alright, let's see what happened to the next slide. Now, as you can see, newton raphson formula is given right here. xi plus 1 equal to xi minus f prime divided by second derivative of small f. That formula is only valid when the small function f depending on only one variable x. What happens is, if you have two variables, x1, x2, or you have three variables, x1, x2, x3, or 10 variable x1, x2, x3, up to x10, then how can you generalize that newton raphson method? Well, uh, the answer is rather straightforward, because in that case then, 
instead of having a scalar variable xi plus 1 now become a vector to indicate that it has several variable in there and then on the right hand side instead of a scalar variable xi here I have a vector x evaluated at iteration i instead of having a scalar function small f prime for one variable if you have x a lot of variable that will become a vector and the first derivative now become the gradient so the whole thing here it will become the gradient which is a vector whereas for the previous case f prime here is like a scalar function scalar function here you have a vector function okay and then for the scalar situation for one variable you divide by the second derivative of f if you have multivariable then the second derivative now will become a matrix the second derivative now become a matrix well in matrix notation there's no such a thing like dividing a matrix right here you have divide the second derivative you cannot divide a matrix so the equivalent form of dividing a matrix mean you take that matrix and you take the inverse so as you can see the last equation here is a more general version of Newton method that you can think the last equation there is a Newton method for the situation when you have multivariable more than one variable whereas the first equation here is, is a simple version that have only one variable all right so that is a story that I have up to now about Newton Repson method to find out the minimum and the maximum of a function with one variable or could be multivariable. On the next slide, uh, let me give you the Newton method again but in the form like step by step so that you know exactly what to do and you can also write a computer program if you wish. Okay here is the story let's say you want to figure out to figure out the maximum or the minimum of a given function small f depending on x first step step one you calculate the first derivative and the second derivative of the given function f and then step number two you come up with the initial estimate x naught for the solution so for example you you estimate the value x sub i where i equal to zero okay that is like your initial guess so once you know x sub i which in this case equal to x sub zero you can plug back into the first derivative and the second derivative and then you evaluate at the current point which is x naught that way you will get a number for f prime and a number for f double prime instead of a, an expression and once you know the numerical value for the first derivative of f evaluated at xi and once you know the second derivative of the function small f with respect to xi once you know the initial guess x sub i you can use this newton Raphson formula to figure out the next estimation of the solution which we call xi plus one and then you repeat the same procedure until it converts so that is essentially newton Raphson method that i explain in the form of step-by-step -step numerical algorithm okay now that is the end of the uh, Newton uh, uh, Repson method. Acknowledgement is here. Uh, more information you can find in that website. Thank you.